What up dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. Again, thank you for all the support over the past couple of days on these videos, guys. It really means a lot, uh, and I thought I'd do something that a lot of people have been asking me for today. It's an updated Aya farming guide, basically the best method of farming Aya to get those vaulted relics uh, from the current Aya event. Uh, the best way since they nerfed the Ghoul Purge. When I say they nerfed the Ghoul Purge, they basically made it so it's not going to appear anytime soon again. The next time the Ghoul Purge will be back... Uh, is by the time they'll be able to nerf the drop rates from the Ghoul Purge. So we'll be going with the next best thing. I'm actually going to show you how to kind of cheese this a little bit. Uh, and keep in mind, the Prime Resurgence event with this Aya is only going to last for another 34 days. But Saren Prime is coming next week, so you want to get that Aya stacked up, get a bunch of Saren Prime relics. Before we get into it, let's just say thank you guys so much again, and there's a live stream link on the screen right now if you want to check out the live stream channel. All right, so we're going to be going over all the builds, and this is basically called the Brute Force Method. We're going to be doing Dymo's Bounties. You can screen, you can pause the video if you want to see these builds very, like, detailed. We're going to be doing double speed here so I can fit everything in the video. But basically, frame choice for this, you're going to want to bring Mesa or Mesa Prime or Zaku. Those are, like, the two best choices because those frames, their special abilities will uh, only kill enemies, like these infested enemies for these Dymo's Bounties, when they come out of the spawn pods. You don't want to kill enemies before they come out of the spawn pod. They will not count for, for, for progressing the bounty. But basically what we're going to be doing here is you're going to want to have... Uh, you're going to be playing Mace of Prime. You're going to have the Kuva Ogress or some other AoE weapon. You're going to want to have an Arc Wing for flying around real fast. And you want to have a hard-hitting melee weapon or something like that. I have the Strofa with a Corrosive build. You want someone that can kill these gigantic, uh, like, Dimos Rex enemies or whatever they're called. And here's, here's the most important part of the entire video, guys. Here's what I want you to walk away from this video with for the best IF farming method. You want, here's the process. First, go to Mother, the Mother Bounty Giver in the Necrolisk. You're actually going to be inside the ship, or inside the Necrolisk here picking a bounty. Pick the Tier 5 bounty, the one below the Steel Path. That has the highest drop rate for Aya, um, and you can get tons of Aya. And thankfully, the reason this is better than the... Um, then Fortuna is actually a multitude of reasons. But basically, these bounties don't bug out anywhere near as much as Dimos, or as, as much as Fortuna and the Plains uh, bounties bug out. So your first step right here, you're just going to grab whatever Tier 5 bounty it was. Your objective now is to abandon that bounty. The reason you want to abandon the first bounty, and there's certain objectives like this one right here, you have to basically... There's certain objectives you can't really abandon easily, um, but you're trying to abandon the first bounty, and the reason you're doing that is you're going to actually, uh, when you pick a bounty, like let's say we pick the tier 5 bounty like we did right here, the entire world tier is set to tier 5. So every bounty we can grab from these other, like these bounty givers in the open world, that will be a tier 5 bounty. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get a good bounty, but it has the tier 5 world tier giving you the high Aya drop rate. So grab whatever bounty Mother has. Uh, try to abandon it. If, you, if it's this, if it's this hive tumors one, you might just need to actually do this step anyway. And here's what I was talking about with Mesa. You can put your Mesa regulators on. You can you can just hold down the button. Mesa will not shoot until the enemy comes out of the spawn pot and counts for progressing the bounty. So very important there. Like I said, Zaku's second ability, Grasp of Loke, can also it also has that uh, property to it where it will not shoot enemy until it's out of the spawn pod. Um, that's gonna be your best bet. So. Quickly just clear out the bounty. Um, you don't even need Prime Sure Footed for this. Uh, normal Mesa works. Um, Ogress, Kuva Ogress is very nice with Nightwatch Napalm to just, you know, cover the entire area and fire. Um, but yeah, just, so here, I'm gonna, once we get past this, once I'm actually able to abandon this step of the bounty, we'll talk about what you want to do. So, um, you're looking for the bounty called Brute Force. That's why it's called the Brute Force method. You're, the Brute Force bounty has good bounty steps for the most part. Um, Lots of the bounty steps can be annoying, like defend the area for like three minutes, defend excavators for like three minutes, however long it takes. Um, brute force is basically all the steps are relatively fast, besides the last one, which is a basically a killing contest versus the Grenier. So the assassination bounty can be easily abandoned, just fly to the other side of the map, and then this is where you're going to be uh, hunting down the brute force bounty. So now that we have the world tier on tier five and we've abandoned our previous bounty, start going to the mother NPCs. There's three locations for them on the map, and we got lucky enough that the one right here had brute force. You click on brute force, and now the farm begins. Um, the steps on this one, I'm actually going to help you min-max and just like play these properly. Um, so the first one's just the hive. Um, you can just easily use Mesa to just gun everything down. Um, just like I said, don't kill the spawn pods. Wait till the enemies come out and you'll be good to go. 
Um, the second step after that is going to be an assassination bounty, the one we were just talking about. Uh, the way that one works, you need to just kill a bunch of enemies, pick up their parts. Vacuum's really good for that. Fetch if you have a, a, a cat or whatever. Um, and then once you do that, the Magus Anomaly uh, Arcane for Operators will help you drag enemies into the middle circle. To get the uh, bounty to complete, you need to kill enemies in the middle circle. If you're just gunning things down all over the place, are gunning enemies down all over the place it is not going to be optimal. You will not be getting your Aya. Uh, you can actually get three Aya in 10 minutes if you're lucky enough with this, guys. So this is the best Aya farm currently. Um, so yeah, just complete the first step. Very easy as Mesa. Um, for the, the second step, the assassination target, that's where having the Corrosive Strofa build will be very good for uh, basically two-shotting the big uh, mini-boss that spawns at the end. And yeah, so some other things to keep in mind as well is that with your Kuva Ogress, you can actually shir uh, you can shoot through some of the objectives um, to just like, you know, d damage them. AOE shots go through some of these objectives, making it very easy to, uh, you know, complete the, for example, the, the caches one. You have to find the caches that are in the tumors. You can shoot them from outside of it with the Kuva Ogress and certain other weapons as well. Um, there is going to be one that's going to be called the, the, the one you're talking about, the Grenier. That's the hardest step here. Don't buff the Grenier. Your, your purpose should just be spawn camping all the, the enemies that spawn. Um, also, make sure you're always using the, the Nightwave button to skip dialogue to make it go faster. You want to spawn camp. And also, doing this solo or, or duo is going to be faster than doing it with a full squad, by the way, guys. Um, because just less, you have to do less of these objectives if you are solo. Um, like, for example, the one where you have to collect the samples is only like 15 samples. Um, and then the one where you have to get all the... Uh, like, you have to like basically do a scavenger hunt. It's, it's lower depending on how many people you have in there. So I'd recommend the solo or duo technically um, can also be good. Um, so for the tumors one, this is what I'm talking about. This is where the ogres will be your friend. Shoot the first one. You can shoot through it with the ogres, as you can see. And then it's very, very easy just to like fly around an arc wing and nuke these things down. That bounty step took like, I don't know, 20 seconds. Uh, and that potentially could have been an Aya right there. As you can see, we're, we're knocking out this bounty very quickly. Already done with the second step. You want to get all those bonus objectives too because this will give you more mother tokens. It will give you a, uh, a double loot drop on the last step. You get everything uh, perfect. So very, very important to get everything perfect here, guys. Um, and Mesa makes it very easy. So here's the part collection one. Now this one's actually very good, um, like I said, with, with Magus Anomaly. Uh, Magus Anomaly, that Operator Arcane will pull the enemies in, make it very, very easy. You can complete this one just as fast as the previous caches one if you do it uh, extremely fast. Mason gunning things down from a, gunning enemies down from across the uh, the map here, and now the second step is beginning. Watch how fast we complete the second step. This is the best IF farm in the game. Uh, and now all you need to do is just kill this 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 big boy, big boy down. Uh, potential IA drop right there. We got an amber star. Uh, you know we're we're knocking this out really really fast, guys. Let's go over to the next one. Now this one right here. The, the game is currently very buggy after the new war update, uh, and it lags out. You can do this step right here completely in Arcwing. Uh, grab that power cell, put it into the uh, the purifier, and then you can fly around grabbing these things in Arcwing. It's faster than doing it on foot, um, but my game was lagging out really. As you can see right here, the game basically crashed uh, like twice when I was picking these things up in, in Arcwing. So you might want to be kind of careful. It, that the game is not, like, they, they need to fix some stuff. They need to come back from vacation and fix some stuff here. Uh, but this one's not too bad either. And then we've got the final step versus the Grenier. Just basically don't let the Grenier kill anything, and you'll be you'll be doing great. Um, some other things you can potentially do here besides me. So you could maybe run a Necromech uh, to like spawn camp some of these kills. Maybe to level up your Necromech. And as far as the Mesa build, I would highly recommend to you to mod for some health. Uh, Umbral, Vitality, or whatever will give you like a thousand health. Some of these enemies can do over 700 damage per shot, guys. The, uh, specifically the Jugulus enemies, they fire off like a Slash Blade that does over 700 damage. You can get one shot in some situations, so be very careful about that. And here's the final step, the hardest one. Uh, you're basically just going to hold your, your Regulators down, your Peacemaker, and just spawn camp. Every wave that, of these enemies that spawn will be 10%, so you have to kill 10 waves of enemies to get your final, um, your double reward. And like this is pretty much foolproof. So after you complete this bounty, uh, the last step, just go back to the same exact Mother NPC you had, or you got the Brute Force bounty from, and do it again. You can do this over and over and over again uh, until the, the day, like the Foss and Volm cycle has rotated. And once it's rotated, just go back to the Necrolisk and do the exact same thing again. Grab your Tier 5 bounty, abandon it in the open world, and then go find Brute Force again over and over and over, guys. If you get really lucky, you can get like 3 or 4 Aya in one bounty. Um, and if you get unlucky, you'll get 0 and just get a bunch of Quasis blueprints. Because Quasis blueprints are technically a drop from this. Uh, like I said, the drop rates are technically slightly higher on uh, Fortuna, but there's plenty of bugs on those Fortuna bounties, especially the spy ones, where it's just like, it basically soft locks you from completing the bounty. So I'd recommend doing this. It's very easy. Um, you can also just save up a bunch of mother tokens for when the uh, 
if they bring back Nabaris Knights, you can buy like Exodia Contagions and sell them to people. You could buy um, Sudi Lacera Blueprints, sell those to people. Maybe even uh, Bosmu Blueprints. You see what I'm saying here? Like, there's plenty of things you can spend them on. And uh, this is the, the, the potential rewards here. There's like 1,000 Endo, 750 Kuva, I think it is. Uh, Ayatan Amber Stars. So there, there is tef de technically stuff you could farm here that is useful besides just Aya. So this is the best Aya farm right now. Um, you could also go to do, do like a Void Fissure. Let's say there's a Ucko Fissure where it's a really fast capture and it has a chance of dropping a, uh, an Aya there too. You could technically do that. Um, but... This, this is the best. So if you want to just like get the most bang for your buck and also the most reliable IF farm, I think it's like 45% uh, on like the higher waves on this. Uh, and you can, if you get really good at this, you can knock it out with Mesa real fast. So you also get to use the new Mesa uh, Sentient Skin if you have that. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Uh, you've got plenty of, you got like a, a month basically to farm Aya. Um, if, you, if you do this, like let's say one bounty is like 10 minutes, you do this for like an hour a day, that's like, you know, like almost 20 Aya right there, potentially, um, you know, over 30 days. That's like tons and tons of relics. You could get lots of Sarah relics, sell them for plat in the future, or get the parts for Sarah and sell in the future. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, if you guys have another Aya farm that you like, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I don't really think there are many ones better than this now that Ghoul Purge has been removed. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'll see you next time. Uh, videos coming out every day, and I have not forgotten about the rant video, so don't you worry about that. See you next time. Peace.